Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello guys, welcome to Ikeda. Today we are going to see a topic called as initial and final value theorem, which are very important theorems and we will see them one by one. So let's go back to initial value theorem. <music> The condition for initial value theorem is that f of t and its first derivative they should be Laplace transformable. That means f of t and its first derivative means f dash of t. And initial value theorem is f of 0 minus is nothing but limit. We all know that what is f of 0 minus is initial value of a function. What is that? When limit t tends to 0 minus or 0. To the given function that is f of t and by putting this limit you get f of 0 minus that is nothing but equal to s into f of s when limit of s tends to infinity so we need some expression where s tends to infinity so what we will do we will take laplace transform of f dash of t so we will allow s to approach infinity in equation for laplace transform of f dash of t so let us take Laplace transform of f dash of t. So f dash of t is nothing but d by dt of f of t. And Laplace transform of this So Laplace transform of f dash of t which is on left hand side is equal to on right hand side 0 to infinity d by dt of f of t into e raise to minus st. Now we will put limit s tending to infinity. Why we are putting that limit is because we have to prove that limit s tends to infinity is into s into f of s is equal to f of 0 minus which is initial value. That means initial value is achieved by putting s equal to infinity. So let's put the limit. So when limit s tends to infinity to Laplace transform of f dash of t, that is nothing but limit Now we have two values for this. One is because this s is not function of time we can directly put this value or this limit here and when i put this s tending to infinity see it is plus infinity so it is going to be e raised to minus infinity and e raised to minus infinity is zero so this particular value is going to be zero and that is equal to again limit s tending to infinity d by dt for f of t now d by dt for f of t into e raise to minus st dt we know that laplace transform of this particular this is nothing but laplace transform and laplace transform for this whole term is nothing but s into f of s minus f of 0 minus see this is the property which we have seen it is laplace transform of d by dt of f of t is s into f of s minus f of 0 minus and this particular term is nothing but except this limit this particular term so we'll put it a bracket this particular term is nothing but Laplace transform of d by dt of f of t or f dash of t so this is what I am getting or now because left hand side is 0 why it is 0 because when I put the limit here s tending to infinity this whole expression becomes 0 and because it is 0 simply see there is no s term here so I can take this f of 0 minus on left hand side. So f of 0 minus is going to be equal to limit of s tending to infinity s into f of s and this proves our initial value theorem because initial value theorem was or in fact it is still f of 0 minus equal to limit s tending to infinity s into f of s. So this is what we have got f of 0 minus equal to limit s tending to infinity s into f of s 
Now I think depending on this, we will solve one numerical. And the numerical is given to us. It is I1 of S. So already something in S domain is provided to us. It is 2S plus 5 divided by S plus 1 into S plus 2. By applying partial fractions and taking inverse Laplace transform, the I1 of T, that means original signal comes out to be 3 into E raised to minus T. This we can verify. That is not our topic right now. We will assume that this answer is correct. In fact, it is correct. And because we want initial value theorem, our theorem is initial value theorem. So initial means put time t equal to 0. So for this expression, the initial value, how much it should come? Put t equal to 0. Here also t equal to 0. So 3 and here it will come e raised to 0 means 1. So 3 minus 1, it should be 2. So our answer is 2. Now we will cross check this answer by applying this initial value theorem and this theorem says that f of 0 minus, so I will write it here, f of 0 minus is going to be limit s tending to infinity s into f of s. Now we have this f of s, we have to just multiply it by s. So what I will do, i of 0 minus is going to be limit s tending to infinity s multiplied by i1 of s instead of this f of s i'll put i1 of s so it is going to be 2 into s plus 5 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 and when i want to put this limit s tending to infinity i will take s outside so if i want to solve it limit s tending to infinity this s is as it is there then again i will take this s as common from numerator 1s will come and in bracket 2 plus 5 divided by s and denominator again i will take all the s one is common from here another is common from here so it is going to be s square from denominator and it is going to be 1 plus 1 by s and 1 plus 2 by s and now you can see i will cancel this s square with this s and s and so what i will get now is when i put limit now s tending to infinity here it will be 0 because 5 upon infinity 0 here also 0 here also 0 1 into 1 will be 1 and here it is 2 so my answer is going to be 2 which is same as my initial value which i got by putting time t equal to 0. So this verifies initial value theorem. Now we will see what is final value theorem. Well final value theorem again says that if f of t and f dash of t are Laplace transformable then limit of t tending to infinity. In earlier case it was t tending to 0 because it was initial value theorem. Because this is final value theorem which is t tending to infinity which is which can be the final value of f of t is equal to limit s tending to 0 s into f of s. So it is exactly reverse way. So we all know that Laplace transform of f dash of t is nothing but 0 to infinity. Now we will put limit s tends to 0. So put s tending to 0. Here we will put limit s tending to 0, what we will get? And see now, when I put s equal to 0, e raised to 0 is 1. And so this term will now become 1. This exponential term will now become 1. And so that becomes 0 to infinity d by dt of f of t into dt. This integration and derivative they will get cancelled. Now I can change this limit infinity such that I will put limit because see in my expression there is limit t tending to infinity. Here also there is a limit which is infinity. So I can write this expression as this expression as limit t tending to infinity 0 to t.
this was our original expression and we said that when i put limit s tending to 0 this becomes 1 e raised to minus st becomes 1 and so now i will write this as sine limit e tending to infinity and 0 to t which is one and same and this term is 1 so i will write just here as d by dt of f of t dt and now the answer for this expression is going to be limit t tending to infinity then f of t minus f of 0 minus we had this limit s tending to infinity to laplace transform of f dash of t why we are taking now s tending to infinity see in our final value theorem on one side we have limit t tending to infinity whereas on the another side we have limit s tending to zero now we have now what we will do so we will take again limit s tending to because we want here zero so we will take limit s tending to zero so we have got this expression for limit t tending to infinity so now we will put limit s tending to zero well when i put limit s tending to zero for zero to infinity d by dt of f of t into e raised to minus st dt in earlier case in initial value theorem when we said that s is tending to infinity what we got we just solved this and it was by using the formula of laplace transform it was s into f of s so again i can also solve this as without putting this limit right now I can solve this term, this remaining term. And if I want to solve this remaining term by using Laplace transform, it will now come as S into F of S minus F of 0 minus. So by putting least limit of S tending to 0 to this formula, I got this expression, which I will call as number 2. By putting same limit s tending to 0 to the same expression, but by putting here s at 0, here we are not putting s at 0, we are solving it first, and then we are going to put limit s tending to 0. Here we are first putting s equal to 0, it becomes e raised to 0, which is 1. And when this exponential term becomes 1, it is no longer Laplace transform, it is just integration of derivative of f of t. So it should get cancelled, and what we get is f of t minus f of 0 minus. So both these expressions, this can be expression 1 and this is expression 2, both these expressions are same. So we can write limit t e tending to infinity f of t minus f of 0 minus is same as limit s tending to 0 s into f of s minus f of 0 minus and see on both sides here there is no time term because time is 0 here then there is no time which is tending to infinity here also it is initial value so you can cancel it from both sides so if i cancel this term what i will get is limit t tending to infinity for f of t is same as limit s tending to 0 for s into f of s and this complete our final value theorem now there is one small example which we will solve on this we will make use of this final value theorem an example tells that i2 of t that is current which is function of time is 5 into u of t minus 3 into e raised to minus 2t and if you ask the final value, what will be the final value of this expression? See, u of t is anyway going to be 1. So it is going to be 5 into 1. I am talking about final value. So final value that is at t equal to infinity. So i2 of infinity, we can call it as final value, is going to be 5 into 1 minus 3. So u of t is always going to be 1 when anyone time tends to infinity u of t is going to be 1 and when I put t equal to infinity it is going to be e raised to minus infinity so it e raised to minus infinity is 0 so my answer should be equal to 5 we will now check it 
Now, because I have this I2 of S, see by applying Laplace transform, I get phi into U of T, Laplace transform of U of T is 1 by S, and for E raised to minus 2T is 1 upon S plus 2. So for I2 of S, it is phi U. So I'll write it here again I2 of S, it is going to be phi U divided by small s minus 3 divided by s plus 2 and if i apply final value theorem my final value theorem says that well we can solve it before applying the theorem so it is going to be phi u into s plus 2 minus 3 into small s divided by s into s plus 2 so it is 2s plus 10 because phi u s minus 3s is 2s phi u into 2 is 10 divided by s into s plus 2 and so final value of this expression which we know that limit t tending to infinity f of t so here it will be i2 of t is nothing but limit s tending to 0 and the expression or if you see the formula limit s tending to 0 s into f of s so it is going to be s multiplied by instead of f of s we will use i of s or i2 of s so it is going to be s into 2s plus 10 divided by s into s plus 2 and this all will be in bracket and that is going to be see this s and s is going to get cancelled and when I put s equal to 0 here this becomes 0 here this also becomes this s also becomes 0 so 10 by 2 is 5 and that is the required answer because final value for t equal to infinity we got equal to 5 and we confirmed it by a 5 so we have confirmed both the theorems initial value as well as final value theorems these are very important theorems in signals and systems as well as in electrical networks so thank you very much guys for watching this video Please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.